Hi everyone, and welcome to this training session dedicated to diesel hybrid sulfurization units. This training session consists in three videos of few minutes during which we will focus on process aspects of hydro treating units. I hope you will find some answers to your questions and that these videos will satisfy your curiosity regarding HDS units. Ready? So let's go! Let's begin with a short introduction. If we have a look at five different crude oils, for example, the WTI, which stands for West Texas Intermediate, which is a crude which is produced in US, the Brent, produced in North Sea of Europe, the Kole, which comes from Congo, Africa, Urals, which is the frontier between Europe and Asia, or the Arabic Medium, which is produced in Saudi Arabia, we see that the sulfur content of these crudes is very viable. It ranges from 0.5 to 2.5 on a weight basis. But today, to satisfy the European specifications in terms of sulfur content in fuels, the refiner has to remove this sulfur. But how? With a hydro treatment. And in the word hydro treatment, there are two sub words hydro and treat, which means treatment with hydrogen. And we are going to let this reaction take place in a unit called HDS, which stands for hydro desulfurization. The crude oil is first being processed in an initial distillation unit where it is separated into gasoline, kerosene, and diesel fuel. Hydro treating takes place downstream with distillation as a finishing process to remove the sulfur of diesel fuel coming out from the distillation unit. You see, on this refinery overview that we do not only hydrotreat diesel fuel, but also gasoline and kerosene. But in this training session, we will focus on diesel HDS only. The questions we are going to ask and hopefully answer in this training are, what are the main characteristics of raw diesel gas? What does a diesel HDS look like? And what are the important operating parameters? Before going more in detail in the main subject, let's have a look at the characteristics which the European Union imposes on the diesel fuel. In this graph, we see that the sulfur specification of the diesel fuel has been significantly reduced over past years. Objective was 3000 ppm sulfur at the beginning of the 90s. It has been then decreased down to 2500 ppm in 95 then 500 in 97, 350 in 2000, 50 in 2005, and finally 10 ppm in 2009. Nowadays, we can resolutely think that this specification will not evolve anymore because the 10 ppm value is close to the minimum value that can be measured. It is, however, to be pointed out that US asks for 15 ppm. If we step back a little and have a look at the whole of European specification on diesel fuel, we see that the significant numbers of characteristics are reported and required from the refiner. Let's make a zoom on those who are the most important and on which the HTS process will have an impact on. The first one of these characteristics is obviously the sulfur. We already saw it before. Besides, we ask the density of the diesel fuel be, to be between 820 and 845 kg per cubes. We will see that it has an importance in a later stage of its training session. It is also mentioned that the maximum water content shall be 200 ppm on a weight basis. Finally, a specification on flash point is also mentioned. The flash point, for those who have never heard about it, it is the minimum temperature at which a diesel fuel spontaneously ignites in the presence of a source of ignition. This characteristic is directly linked to the lightened content in the diesel fuel. The more it will have light dissolved molecules, typically C1 to C5, the lowest the temperature at which it is possible to create a potentially flammable gaseous cloud in the presence of a source of ignition. This specification is set at 55 degrees in the European regulation. It is necessary to know that we impose many other properties. 
but I suggest not going in further details here because the latter will not be affected by the HDS process. Now that we know where we want to go, the question is, what is the starting point? As we have already seen together just before, the content in sulfur in the crude oil are variable. It's the same for the sulfur content in the diesel cut. This value is directly linked to the crude oil sulfur from which it is produced. A rule of thumb says that the sulfur content in the diesel cut is about three quarters of that of crude oil from which it originates. In a diesel HDS, we are going to process not only the diesel cut produced in the atmospheric distillation that we call straight run diesel, but also other feedstocks produced in conversion units of the refinery. Once again, in the term hydro desulfurization, we see two words hydro and desulfurization. It means desulfurization in presence of hydrogen. But this reaction is, however, possible only in simultaneous presence of hydrogen, pressure, temperature, and catalyst. Let's begin by making a zoom on straight run material. In this table, we see reported the properties of diesel cuts from the various crudes we saw a few minutes ago. The sulfur in diesel cut is well correlated to the sulfur content of the crude oil. But as far as nitrogen is concerned, it is a little bit more chaotic. It varies from 30 to 160 ppm. Regarding the aromatic content, we see that it ranges from 20 to 30 percent volume. This property is pretty well correlated to the density, as we will see later on. Finally, the olefin content which corresponds to the quantity of molecules which contain at least a carbon-carbon double bond, is close to zero. Because, in the crude oil, carbon-carbon double bond are almost non-existent. The question you now may ask yourself is, under which form is the sulfur in stratron diesel? Several types of molecules exist in diesel cut. Basothiophene, debasothiophene, and alkyl debasothiophene. The heavier the molecule, the more complicated it will be to extract the sulfur. We qualify then this molecule as refractory sulfur. The main form under which is present the sulfur in diesel material is dibenzothiophenes. Nitrogen is an important parameter because it inhibits HDS reactions. Aromatic content also has an importance because it will directly impact the hydrogen consumption. This graph pretty well proves that the density is linked to aromatic content. Then, what about cracked feeds? Here is the picture of the who's who of these feeds. The LCO, or light cycle oil, comes from the FCC. The VBGO, or the vis broken diesel oil, comes from the vis breaker unit. Finally, the LCGO, or light coker gas oil, comes from the coker unit. All these units are called conversion units. They produce naturally high sulfur, high nitrogen, high olefinic, and high aromatic material. In this table, we see an example of a LCO, VBGO, and LCGO of different refineries within the group. What is quite obvious is that the density is much more important than in straight-run material. This reflects the high aromatic content of these streams. The sulfur content, just like the nitrogen content, is very high. And finally, the olefin content, characterized by the bromine number, is also high. We thus conclude from this, all this information that the cracked feeds are harder to hydrotreat than straight-run material. That's it for the first part of this training session dedicated to diesel hydro treatments. Hope you will jump to the second video to talk about the HDS process. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye bye.